Welcome to another episode of Newsline. I am Jennifer Igwe. We have a superb lineup of stories, all worth sharing for impact and needed action. Nigeria is a nation blessed with abundant human and natural resources. We also have many undiscovered talents and geniuses. Our interaction with a boy who has the rare ability to do something even science cannot explain is a pointer to these facts. Now, infidelity in marriage is a violation of trust and vows couples took when they tied the knot. It also wrecks peace, joy, and emotional stability in families. Our correspondent will shed light, more light on this and how to cope with infidelity in marriage. Then the leper's colony that has been in existence for over a century and how it has, against all odds, thrived is a must watch. Our report on a cash crop with health benefit worth harnessing is something you need to know about, including why we need to change the ugly narrative of jungle justice. We also have Newsline's fabulous social diary, including initiatives by corporate organizations and cultural celebrations. But first, the news for the day, and my colleague Elizabeth Omori is on standby in Abuja for it. Hello, Lizzie, over to you. Hello Jennifer and thanks for joining us on the new segment of the program. Let's begin with security. President Muhammad Buhari has condemned the Boko Haram attack on Garkida in Adamawa state, extending his sympathy to families of victims. In a statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Gadra Shehu, the President assures that no part of Nigeria would be abandoned to their fate and describes the attack on soft targets by the terrorists as obvious signs of frustration, expressing confidence that the terrorists will continue to face the combined power of the military until they give up their mistaken ways. President Barry says since the coming of his administration, Boko Haram's ability to invade and occupy Nigerian territories, let alone be able to hoist their flags, had been frustrated. President Barry says that in the coming weeks, Nigerians will witness an aggressive campaign to root Boko Haram once and for all, and appeals to Nigerians to continue to support troops in their efforts to protect citizens and secure the country. Meanwhile, troops of 232 Battalion of the 23 Armed Brigade, Operation Lafayette Dole, had intercepted and thwarted Boko Haram terrorists who attacked Garkida on February 21, 2020. In a press release by the in a press release by the Assistant Director, Army Public Relations, 23 Brigade Yola Major Haruna Mohammed Sani, the terrorists besieged the town in gun trucks and a motorcycle setting some buildings ablaze and causing unrest within the community before they were intercepted by the troops leading to the elimination of several of attackers as others withdrew wounded. Regrettably, one gallant soldier paid the supreme price while another soldier who was wounded in action is responding to treatment in a military medical facility. Commander 23 Armed Brigade, Brigadier General Sani Gambo Mohammed, visited the troops and locations and urged them to be more vigilant to avoid reprisal attacks. He also solicited citizens' continuous cooperation in reporting to security agencies any suspicious persons or movement within communities. And our report just coming in says normalcy has returned to Garkida town in Adama state. Yusuf Jika just back from the town reports that Governor Hamadu Umar Finter visited Garkida on a fact-finding mission. Attack by insurgents in Garkida town lasted for over three hours Friday evening and destroyed residential houses, police station, police barracks, worship centers, office of the electricity distribution company, shops, hospitals, and cut it away with valuable worth millions of naira. The attack, which was repelled by the Nigerian army, claimed the life of a soldier and a number of insurgents were killed. Reports gathered reveals that most of the people fled the town to seek for refuge in a safer grounds. 
there are nine uh, hillocks. So vigilante and the, the army that we have on ground, they were not uh, engaged in because they came with heavy load. Governor Amadou Omar Fintry of Adamawa State, who visited the town, expressed concern with the level of the destruction, reiterating government's commitment to further safeguard lives and property as well as rebuild the affected structures. We will further reinforce this place with the military. We will uh, recruit more vigilantes and empower them uh, for them to give support to the military. Uh, but in the interim, we will send support, particularly palliative, to those affected. Uh, the building of the community will also commence immediately. We have the capacity to stand against them, and that's why we continue to solicit and inform the uh, locals need to give us uh, information. In Yola, Jika, NT News. In a way from security, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says the federal government is targeting about $1 billion annually from artisanal mining if the sector is given the desired attention and support. The minister stated this in an interview ahead of the former flag off of the program in Kebbi State. Anthony Forson reports that the Presidential Artisanal Gold Mining Development Initiative is a scheme designed by the federal government to help eradicate illegal mining and make the sector more formal. And what this means that we are going to register all artisanal miners in Nigeria, take their biometrics, take their photographs, get their addresses, and then the federal government will now support them in the mining industry. This is the best way to eradicate um, you know, illegal mine, uh, miners. And then whatever goal we the mine, we, we bought by the central bank and we are very confident that with this new initiative we are going to be, we'll be able to um, uh, probably make over a billion dollars in loan in gold the minister explained that the pilot scheme has two states for the initial takeoff this uh, pilot program will be in two states in osho and in kebi in kebi we are going to raise about three thousand at this time no miners taking their biometrics taking their you know details now to infrastructure minister of state for works and housing abubaka aliu has expressed displeasure and concern over the slow pace of work at the section one of kano meiduguri dualization project by the contracting firm despite fans being released to complete the road infrastructure the minister who paid an unscheduled visit to the site said federal government will not take it lightly Mohammed Rabiu Ali reports. You know, you are not doing artwork. This is my account for artwork. Yes. This is the second time the Minister of State for Works and Housing, Abu Bakr Aliyu, is visiting the long established project in less than a year. His concern is to address the complaints raised by motorists on the speedy completion of the bad portion of 13 kilometer Gaya Wulu Road. I want to urge them to push this work because this road is very, very important to the people here and to the nation because it's a major road linking Kano to Meduguri. And the Gaya Woodil section, they are not doing well there. So I have directed that they should increase uh, men and machine on this stretch so that uh, they link up Gaya and Wudil before continuing other areas. The minister also inspected Shuarin Gaya and Bridge 2 of Wudil Interchange, urging the contractor to expedite action on the project to ease the hardship being faced by road users. Two years there's been scoop funding and there's no reason why we cannot continue to work. This is kudos to the government of uh, President Mohamed Buhari. The project, when completed, is expected not only to stand the test of time, but also contribute to the socio-economic development of the people in the area. Mohamed Rabiu Ali, NTA News. And as part of government's efforts to build capacity of Nigerian youths in vocational studies, the industrial training fund is expanding. The Katsina State Office of ITF was inaugurated by the Minister of State Trade and Investment. Mohamed Salio Awal reports. 
When fully operational, the vocational training center is expected to train Nigerian youth to meet the manpower requirements in vocational skills to actualize the local content policy of the federal government. It is also to provide vocational training to both public and private sectors in electrical and electronics, welding, fitting and machine, as well as repairs of refrigerator. President Mohamed Buhari, GCFR, made a commitment to the nation that his administration will strive to take 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. Kazana State Deputy Governor Moniri Akubu pledged the Kazana State government readiness to make optimum utilization of the center in the training of Kazana State indigenous to promote self-reliance among the teeming population. Kazana State and the nation at large has felt the impact of the ITL through skills intervention programs that have equipped Nigerians across the country with skills and empowered them with tools to start their business. The Director General of the National Industrial Training Fund, Sir Joseph Ari, said the fund is fully positioned to contribute in the vocational training of interested individuals. The provision of infrastructural development that will enhance job creation and entrepreneurial development of Nigerians, which is one of the key development agenda of the Buhari administration. The inaugurated vocational training center in Kathana will be provided with state-of-the-art equipment and is to commence operations as soon as possible. In Kathana, Mohamed Salis Awal, NTA News. Let's not shift our attention to aviation. The Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, NAMA, has inaugurated its newly installed Category 3 instrument landing system at runway 18 right, Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, as well as runway 22 at the Inamdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja. Also inaugurated is the newly installed Doppler, a very high frequent omnidirectional radio range, DVOR, in Lagos. This is in addition to the routine flight calibration which has been successfully carried out on runway 18 left in Lagos. A statement by Director of Public Affairs of the Ministry of Aviation, James Odaudu, confirmed that the managing director of NAMA, Captain Fola Akikotu, disclosed that a notice to airmen no term has been dis disseminated accordingly, while calibration of navigational aids in other locations across the country is in progress to ensure all navigational aids in Nigeria that are due for calibration are covered. Now to financial matters, the Central Bank of Nigeria has formally clarified the uncertainties surrounding the operations of domiciliary accounts in Nigeria. The Director of Corporate Communications, Isaac Okorafo, while making the clarification in Abuja, noted that the bank has not prohibited the acceptance of foreign currency cash deposits by commercial banks. He further explained that only electronic funds can be transferred into domiciliary accounts and only cash deposits deposits can be withdrawn in cash as well. Okora therefore urged interested parties to always seek clarification on issues and avoid speculative tendencies which are detrimental to the financial sector. Now it's a day after the presidential election in Togo and Togolese are anxiously waiting for the announcement of the result. Now let's join correspondent Musba Dangwahab in Lome. Musba, What's the situation in Lome now? Yes, Togolese across the nation are anxiously waiting for the result of the presidential election that took place yesterday. Uh, in the meantime, the city of Lome remains very calm after last night's care when uh, military men were deployed to surround the buildings, uh, houses of uh, some presidential candidates. Well, of course, the ECOWAS election observation mission has been on top of the situation as they got through to the defense minister who assured them that it was just a preventive measure uh, against any possible crisis. Uh, uh, but after then, everything has gone back to normal and uh, observers of ECOWAS deployed across the country are back in Lobe. They have been debriefed. 
and the meeting of heads of election observation missions, uh, including that of ECOWAS African Union and of course uh, United Nations just ended a few minutes ago. The meeting was to harmonize the observation of various election observation missions and what will be next now will be the preliminary declaration uh, by the ECOWAS election observation mission uh, to be presented by the head of mission and former president of Sierra Leone, Ernest Bai Koroma. That will be tomorrow, Monday. Thank you, Musba. We will be expecting more updates subsequently. Dan have there all the way from Lome, Togo. And out to sports, Lobby Stars of Makuti drop down in NPFL as Handball League continues in Abuja. Amanda Marcus has details on sports updates. Plateau United Football Club returned to the top of the Nigeria Professional Football League after Sunday's goalless draw at Lobby in Makurdi, as the just based club side now has 37 points from 21 matches. Katina United and Nasarawa United all won at home. No away win in week 21, but five draws were recorded. Nigeria Customs Women's Beach Volleyball Team are among winners of the President's Cup competition, which ended recently in Kaduna. They defeated Benue Queens 2 0 in a competition competed for based on age group. Muhammad Umar Ajingi reports that some of the players in the under-19 category will be drafted to beef up Nigeria's team ahead of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic qualifiers in March. Uh, after a while, now we will get, get back to our position in Africa, first position. The inaugural North Central Handball League enters the tree on Monday with elite club sides in contention for the title at the Indo Hall of the Moshut Abiola National Stadium Abuja. In one of the pairings on Sunday, Ahmed Musa produced a man of the match performance as defenders of Abuja beat Rising Stars of Abuja 31 goals to 27. Earlier on Saturday, Nigeria Handball Premier League champion safety shooters opened their campaign with a 39 to 25 goals victory over. Benue Buffaloes of Makudi. Everybody is here is equally here for, to win the tournament. So I don't say I am an upset and others are equally an obstacle to me too. In boxing, Deontay Wilder has reacted to his seventh round technical knockout by Tyson Fury in Las Vegas, blaming his corner for throwing in the towel at a time he would have gone out on his shield as a warrior, but admitted that Fury was the best man for the night. The victor, who was carried to the ring on a throne, restated he is a man of his words. Many boxing fans never imagined that after their 2018 draw, the 31 year old Briton will flow the American in the third and fifth rounds with such intensity to end Wilder's reign as the WBC heavyweight world champion. The judges had scored 59 52, 59 52, and 58 53 in favor of Fury even before the seventh round stoppage as Wilder tested his first defeat in his 11th defense. Talks of a rematch or unification fight between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua has started. Response update Amanzi Marcus, NTA News. And let's find out what the weather would look like tomorrow, Monday. the new segment of Newsline. Don't forget Jennifer is standing by to blow your mind with some captivating reports. Stay with us. Welcome back and thank you for staying on the line. Geniuses are born, not made. And just like diamond, they are scarce, rare, and hard to come by.
It will surprise you to know that News Live recently discovered in the heart of Lagos a young genius who is capable of doing something science cannot explain. Uzezi Arure takes us through her findings about Shiju Olawipo. Knowing about the existence of a primary five school pupil in Lagos, who can tell the day of any date supplied to him, sounded extraordinarily impossible to me, yet amazing. This propelled my curiosity to find out more. On arrival, the school confirmed the story was true, and I was satisfied to know Nigeria has a mini Albert Einstein, a native of Kwara State. However, we were asked to return as the genius was indisposed. I revisited the school with high hopes to meet the young chap whose brain works almost faster than an internet search engine when it comes to calendar dates. Amazingly, Shiju's classmates have similar opinions about his personality. He likes to keep papers under his locker. <laughs> I could easily understand why the ICT teacher came about discovering Shiju's talents. His connection with the pupils bring him closer to them. The teacher went on to say he observed Shiju's constant demand for plain sheets to design calendars. He thought the boy was being wasteful at first, but his persistence became unbearable, which made the teacher give him some attention. Sometimes we hear him say things like, I want to write calendar for 2045, I want to write calendar for 2050. Uh, so sometimes when he says those things, they sound very funny. So that day I kept on asking him random questions until he finished the calendar on my phone. How do you know how to design calendars? I just know to design calendars. How many calendars have you designed so far? Twelve. Do you hear anything in your head or in your mind when you're being asked about calendars? In my head. What day is 18th of August 1983? 8th, 1983 is Thursday. Wow. And it's not a leap year. <laughs> he added that it's not a leap year and this is it. It's actually correct. It's right. And in terms of writing, he's always okay. He didn't find it very funny himself being a kid. Because he was, he was criticized by all his parents, he was bullied down by you know every other person. But it's like, it's like a plant that is trying to sprout against all odds. Initially, it was tough. He litters the whole house with papers. He wants to, he wants to catch your attention because then we were always dismissing him. He knows he has an ability or he has the potential, and he's very, very stubborn about it. Professor Ben Ezeoagu gave an insight to Shiju's talents. When we mention individuals such as Chinua Achebe, Chike Ubi, Ayodele Awojobi, when we mention Fela Shuande, these are great geniuses, of which also at tender age they manifested great ingenuity. It's a carrying over from their past lives. And at this time, or at the time they lived, they really expressed great works in whatever field of human endeavor they have actually uh, been involved. As Shiju Olawepo, the young genius, continues to design calendars and seamlessly provides day to dates of time in the past and the future, can his geniusness be scientifically proven? Hmm, I am sure we have many undiscovered Albert Einstein and Isaac Newtons in Nigeria. Really, I am sure we do. Now to spate of mob action. Do you remember the story? Now to... Now, do you remember the story of Mary Slessor, that Scottish Presbyterian missionary who stopped the killings of twins in Calabar in the early 90s? Well, here is a similar story that tends to be more devastating happening in 67 villages within the FCT, even in the 21st century. Let's get the gist from Doni Dia. <laughs> 
A physiotherapy session to revive the veins. Emmanuel is a four year old boy but still can work. He developed jaundice and convulsion shortly after birth. The medical condition degenerated and affected the muscles, thereby leading to partial paralysis. A pathetic story, you may say. But something more devastating is behind the story. About 160 children here at the Vine Heritage Home. Kuje are bound together by one fate, a cultural norm which places death penalty on albinos, twins, triplets, or children with special needs such as cerebral palsy, Down syndrome. Pastor Stephen Olushola is a missionary and keeper of the home. His missionary journey to Kuje Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, led to the discovery of about 67 of such villages where such primitive culture are still practiced. Cleft lip, the ordinary surgery we take care of, they kill them. In fact, five area council of FCT, we discover 66 other villages, making a total of 67 villages that are involved in this practice. So we started picking the children one after the other. And as of today, we have a total of 157 children, and among them, we have 14 set of twins, a set of triplets, and we have several children who have been taken from that practice of burying a child with a dead mother. That is the practice that gives us the highest number of children. One thing that comes to mind is, well, should anyone allow an innocent child suffer for a sin he or she knows nothing about? Basically, what we do and what we advocate is that any woman that is coming for antenatal should come with her husband or should come with somebody who is a caregiver, you understand, so that it's not just the woman that has been educated because in the antenatal care classes they're educated on what pregnancy is, what the complications of pregnancy can be and how we can mitigate against the complication. For Pastor Stephen Olushola, catering for these children is a huge burden to bear considering the current economic realities, but thankfully a group is lending a helping hand, the Defense and Police Officers Wives Association, the POA. We came with um, a lot of uh, humanitarian gift to support them, to put smile on their faces. And we, we pray that Almighty God will continue to give us strength so that we'll continue to support the society. As these innocent children therefore face the unknown future that lies ahead of them, the poor says all hope is not lost. A show of love and the heart of kindness is all that is needed to rewrite their stories. need more education on this. Now, jungle justice, though may not sound strange, is a societal menace that has led to loss of innocent lives. In spite of awareness campaigns to dissuade people from carrying out the inhuman act, Erica Evie says the trend has persisted in Cross River State. Let's know why Erica is bringing up the story and solutions. Findings reveal that jungle justice is motivated by literacy, chronic anger, and disregard for the rule of law and human rights. But despite effort to stop incessant cases of jungle justice in the society, why has the train persisted? You know, any man that thief rob him or enter his house, pack things, is an angry man. If anything come happen that the whole TV in his present, he can do anything. So only when our security men start to walk, if they if they really determine to walk, I believe things will be handled. In spite of these challenges, stakeholders in the security sector have continued to assure Nigerians of efforts to tackle insecurity. Like what you're doing now, is because the public should know that it's not the best way because. The innocent ones might be involved. So we plead to the public that they should discard it. It's barbaric. As a way forward, this school of thought believes that getting the security apparatus effective and ensure quick dispensation of justice will get Nigerians to have confidence in the system rather than resorting to jungle justice. An innocent person can become a culprit 
when the actual culprit has escaped. It is against the society. It does not make for progress. It creates chaos in the society. What should be the penalty for perpetrators of jungle justice? If he's not guilty, he's discharged and acquitted. If he's guilty, of course he's convicted. That is the time that justice has been done. Has been done. But when you see somebody and you take the laws into your hands and they attack a mob, that is not. Uh, you are even ending up to. Uh, you are end. You end up committing. A crime on your own is totally condemned and uh, it should not be supported as a lawmaker. Um, the law should take its course. There is therefore a clarion call that root causes of mob justice should be tackled head on and build public confidence in agencies of government mandated to address this growing societal decay. <laughs> action has sent many innocents to early graves. It should be discouraged. A maid constantly abused by her guardian has been rescued by the Office of Public Defender, Ministry of Justice, Delta State. Kelvin Uweche has details of the maid's rescue. The head of the unit, Monica Odafe Fuller, noted that the young lady was rescued after a series of strategies. We got an information about uh, four days ago that a maid was seriously being manhandled by her boss. And uh, we came to meet the police at the state headquarters here. We were there about two days ago to try to invite the madam and the maid, but uh, it was all a uh, infutility. And today again, we went, this time around, with more of my legal officers and the police. We were there for about three hours. The woman refused to come out, but eventually we succeeded. And we met this girl of about, the woman of about, uh, 21 to 23 years, our bodies with serious marks. Battered. Battered, a neck bent, a neck bent, and uh, injuries all over her head. All the over. On the head. And uh, we're happy to say that uh, she's now with the police. At the police station, a little drama played out, which was captured by the lens of our hidden camera. Now, no, 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 She's not a kid. Wait, what me I want She's to spent two uh, years in the first quarter yes, there. Wait, you are seeing that. Madam, let me ask you a very simple question. You tell this girl she's not useful to me. Mm. If something is not useful to me, how do you have it? The rescued maid noted that she has been with the boss for three years without being in school or acquiring any skill. I am not going to go to the from your mouth because we are here to set you free. Both the rescued and the boss are from Edo State. The rescue team also gave advice to both the abused and others in the society. People should stay clear of violence. The law is does not allow you to maltreat any human being. Every child, every human being have a right to live. When you find out issues like that, maybe your neighbors, even close relatives, who you know that are maltreating, battering, beating excessively, that maids, even their children, can come to the police or even our office, the Office of the Public Defender Unit, the sector of Ministry of Justice. Make the reports. You help us and we'll help the public. We are solely for the indigents of the state. The Office of Public Defender was established by virtue of public defender law under Delta State Ministry of Justice. The office renders free legal services and rescues when necessary. With this, all hands must be on deck in fighting violence and abuse against the indigents in the society. Learn to treat others right. Domestic helps or workers are human beings too and deserve respect. They also have rights, please. Now, Mole in the immediate outskirts of Meduguri Bonu State is phenomenal. It is one of the settlements with an amazing history. The community of Mole evolved from an art of peculiar circumstance and has over a hundred years flourished as a united group 
with common identity. Hamisurogo reports that Mole is an example of common ideals collapsing barriers of diversity. break when we return we have more stories stay tuned welcome back and now to a cultural festival now saying that states in Nigeria are proud of their cultural heritage is definitely stating the obvious and Yoruba state is not left out Revival of the Bade Fishing and Cultural Festival in Jakusko local government area of the state, Ladibala says, is a pointer to that fact. The Senate President, Lawan Ahmed, and Yobe State Governor, May Malabuni, were present at the event. The Bade Fishing and Cultural Festival predates independence of Nigeria. It was introduced by the then Native Authority in 1956 to, among other things, preserve the cultural identity and heritage of the people. The cultural heritage of the people was brought to bear as the fishermen and Calabash water dancers displayed their skills to the admiration of all. The fishermen were challenged to compete on who gets to catch the biggest fish at the festival. Locke was on the side of the head of divers who caught a six kilogram fish, the biggest of the day. Socialization was at its peak during the festival, judging by the caliber of dignitaries that turned out to identify with the people, thereby promoting unity, love, and prosperity of the area. The president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, Yobe State Governor May Malabuni, in separate remarks, underscored the importance of the festival and the need to upgrade it into a tourism annual event. Uh, but I've uh, also started speaking with uh, some government agencies already to come into participation in this activity. So by next year, we are going to see uh, more government agencies coming, foreign government agencies coming to support us by the press of God. I want to assure you that this is not only a very uh, affair or yoga affair, it's going to be an international affair by the press of God. I believe the government and people that we have visited have a greater chance to increase our revenue flows, both at the public and individual levels, to improve the culture and business of catching, processing, and selling of fish across the country. There is no doubt that one of the most effective ways of improving on our fish economy is to sustain the best fishing and cultural festival and to build on it for many years. On his part, the Emir of Badi, Abubakar Umar Suleiman, solicited the support of Yobe State Government in the area of infrastructure development in the Emirate, especially the construction of road linking Gashma, Amshi, and Gogoram. This year's festival is coming after 16 years following the effort of the Yobe State Governor, May Malabuni. <laughs> Preserving our cultural heritage is important. Now, on another festival, Yori Town in Kirby State came alive as the second edition of the age young Yori Emirates Regatta was staged after it was abandoned over 40 years ago. Anthony Forsen put together this package for Newsline. <laughs> It was a gathering that brought guests from across the country just to be part of the rich cultural festival of a people that dates back two centuries. The warriors are always on board canoes of various sizes with different weapons and with the dexterity of a naval warfare expertise to offer some safety on the waterway. With the coming of the colonial masters, the practice was scaled down to become a prestigious display of wealth, power and influence during wedding ceremonies of highly placed families. Last year, 
His Royal Highness the Emir of Yawuri decided that the security situation has improved remarkably under President Muhammadu Buhari and therefore is safe enough to begin to gather people and uh, observe this festival. So last year it was celebrated, this year is equally celebrated with a bigger audience, which is a testament to that Nigeria is regaining its growth. I just saw now potential Olympic gold medalists. And that is where our strength lies in the diversity of this great country. When we hear people say they are from Riverland area, we are equally from Riverland area. Not many people know that. The northern part of the Nigeria, again, uh, we have a lot of riverine communities like Yahuri. And I'm happy you are excited about what you are seeing. It's about diversification of our economy. It's about looking at the creative industry, of which tourism, heritage, and culture is a major component as the driving force of the modern economy. You can see here young men, young women who have uh, been competing with one another. Now, it's not just about entertainment, it's about employment. It's about business. So come here today and we see the rural water entertainment, the rural water economy. I think uh, it gladdens everybody. And I want to opportunity to congratulate the governor of Kebbi State and the Yaori Emirate for reviving this uh, uh, regard. Must preserve our cultural legacies. No nation will do that for us. Now he is one of the executive directors of NTA a renowned educationist and astute administrator. Recently, he was honored with the title Osisioma by the traditional ruler of Ibueze Onicha in Onicha Council area of Ebuin State for his immense contribution to the development of the community and the country at large. Neka Oko witnessed the epoch-making event for Newsline. Executive Director, Administration and Training, Nigerian Television Authority, Dr. Steve Egbo, was singled out for the award of a chieftaincy title by the traditional ruler of Igwe Zonicha in Onicha Council area of Ebony State, Ezogo Agom Eze, in recognition of his outstanding contributions to the development of the community and the nation at large. <laughs> The celebrant stepped forward to receive the title of Osisioma of Igwe Zonicha. Osisioma means the good tree. And I think I like it. I convey a very deep appreciation to Elder Dr. Gomez, his cabinet, and the people of Ube Zonicha for considering me worthy of such recognition and honor. We've been in this philanthropic business ever since. We are still in it. We hope by God's grace we're going to do more. We have a confidence that all these people who are giving children the title, they will live up to expectation. The event, which was in remembrance of Ezogo Dr. Agomez's 20 years on the throne, was witnessed by eminent personalities. I think it's a very fine thing to recognize people who have made contributions in one way or the other. So I congratulate them. Members of the NTA family from far and near, led by the general manager of NTA, Bakaliki Uzoma Ozodi, who stood in for the director general, were also on ground to celebrate with one of their own. From what I have seen on ground, is a way deserved or not. Congratulations, sir, and I'm sure you'll make a greater impact. Now to another important celebration. It was a dream come true for Joseph Abu as he finally got married to the flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone, Pamela, in a well-attended society wedding. 
correspondent Kenneth Nanim, who witnessed the holy matrimony reports that the event was graced by the creme that de la creme of the society. Ambassador Lawrence Muruku is the father of the bride. Proudly, he walks his daughter down from Ebony State to the Holy Trinity Catholic Church, Maitama, to tie the nuptial knot with her lover, Joseph Abu, from Kogi State. <laughs> the Catholic Bishop of Sokoto Diocese, Most Reverend Matthew Hassan Kuka, blessed the union. That one of the most vital ingredients for marriage that keeps marriage together uh, is communications and uh, your husband has to be your best friend and your wife has to be your best friend it's the only way that um, you will not allow other intervening variables to become a source of destruction the church having certified joseph and pamela Abu as husband and wife their joy knew no bounds in a moment we will find out the reason the couple could not wait but cruise in a convertible Benz class leading the way to the reception arena. Wow, the tempo here is really hot. It was a roll call of who is who in the country. Call it gains of interstate marriage. You will not be wrong. We are one, no matter the place we come from. We should all come together, unite as not uniting by saying it, but uniting by action. And that is what we have tried to prove. I am from Cross River and my wife is from Anambra. You know, and it has extended the coast for both of us. I believe that um, it will also extend the coast for both of them. The NTA big family was well represented. After all, the mother of the groom, an S broadcaster and former executive director programs, Eugenia Abu, is one of their own. We ask God's special blessings upon them. May they give me good grandchildren. Marriage is a journey that needs three people instead of two. Joseph, Pamela, and Jesus. It's to stay true to themselves um, and to also remain down to earth. As they receive blessings and words of encouragement from their parents, the elderly drew their ears to the words of wisdom. With prayer and focus, they can get, they will go far. What we want in this country is stability. Stability of the family is the stability of the nation. The two of them are from good homes. They must have to show each other affection. And the issue of affection, which is love, is something they have to develop and build upon. Okay, but at the same right, time, they should respect each other's problem. culture. Now comes the long-awaited moment for the newlywed to open up the dance floor. Guess what? It was a free-for-all affair. Congratulations to the young couple. We wish them the very best. Now, marriage, they say, is beautiful. But just as the joy that comes with marital bliss can stir a feeling of butterfly in the stomach, the disappointment that comes when that joy is threatened by the unfaithfulness of either of the parties could be frustrating. In a world where infidelity has wrecked so many marriages, what could be the best approach to handling infidelity in marriages? Uche Chukuchubweze Idam has some answers from Ebony State. Trust, honesty, and love are some of the ingredients that lubricate the wheels of marital relationship. However, when unfaithfulness sets in, some take it calmly, but that becomes hard for others to cope with. If I have the chance to fight them, I'll fight, but not like fighting to injure any one of them. Now, as in, I'm very, very mad. Like, I'll shout, I'll cry. First of all, the man must go. I will let him go because for my wife to have 
I mean, to have gotten to a point of sleeping with another man, something happened. So the person I have issue with is not the man. He will go. And I will now resolve the matter with my wife. When Newsline sought to know how best to manage infidelity in marriages, people's answers were full of surprises. You decide what, what you want to do. If you, say, if you decide you don't, you don't want to marry her again, she goes away and nobody will hear about it. And then if you want to shout, you can shout and the world will make more clear of you. I will be sad, the shock alone, you know. But then, I won't give my home for any other woman. For me, going out to, to cheat there, I, I, I make sure that uh, I keep it very, very secretly. The ladies who allege that men cheat more because of their polygamous nature, irrespective of cultural or religious inclinations, said the mind is better conditioned on that when entering into any form of relationship with them. I think men cheat most. And uh, it is generally known and it is generally said that um, men are polygamous in nature. How strong are men in absorbing the shock of infidelity? Well, as a man, I don't have any time to waste. What I, if I discover that my wife is cheating, I will just... Uh, if I cheat on my wife and um, I really cheat on her, and she's aware that I cheated on her. I have to apologize. When a man cheats and when a woman cheats, they are not the same. And it, because, it is because rather of uh, the societal perception. One, um, this is a man's world, so to say. The best thing is to walk away. When there's nothing you will do at that point. In fact, if you want to act as a woman that you are, you might end up doing something that you will regret. You can decide to talk it over. You decide. The best moment, you know when best to discuss with your partner, to talk it over. But if the person refuses to talk it over with you, you might just walk away. Since marriage is built on trust, parties involved are expected to be faithful without giving room for strangers under the guise of side chicks or sugar boy to break the bond. Prevention, they say, is always better than kill. So I would say, avoid infidelity. Let's take another break. News like continue shortly. Stay with us. Nigeria, there is one sound we need to silence. So let's silence to take before he starts. With Oral B All Round Protection, its advanced technology helps prevent both tooth holes and gum problems that can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your teeth, giving them all round protection. Because the only sound we really want to hear is that of our future. For healthier, stronger teeth in one week. It is morning. A new beginning. As you prepare everyone for the day ahead, just anything is not enough. Only you make breakfast special. Creamy. Tasty. With vitamins and nutrients we need for a delightful, healthy start. So start your day right with Hollandia Evap. Hollandia. Your information, they important, just like your identity. Now the only way we fit take hala you make you go browse easy.gotvafrica.com. Sign in with your IUC number and mobile number and scroll down to personal details and address. Then check well to see say everything bam. You fit change the one we not correct. To finish everything, just click the save button and it don't finish. Thank you. I make sure see my phone number they correct. That's not why GoTV fit call me, make I come collect my own and wolf. Angel, hey, <laughs> time for my phone in that way because now my correct phone number they for boo. <laughs> go TV, live it, love it. Now look me again, no? Make you go do your own. Like a bird needs wings to fly, you need skills to be productive. No matter the level of your education, ITF can train you to acquire skills in areas like mechatronics, metal machining, facility technology, electronics and computer networking, 
information and communication technology, ICT, culinary art, and agriculture. Acquire a skill and transform yourself from being unemployed to becoming even an employer. Be a valuable Nigerian youth. Say no to unemployment and poverty. Oh, I'll spread my wings and fly so high. I'll reach for the stars, yeah, it's time. Industrial Training Fund, developing the nation's human resource. Now you all be that. I beg, give me your phone. Ah! I can show you how you go take Dua for my Go TV app for your phone. Life is so much easier with my Go TV app. Make payments, clear error messages, change wow. your package. You can also check your due dates and keep abreast wow. of your payment history. Ah! Oh. And with the call, yeah! the is there. The new my Go TV app is everything you need in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download my GoTV app now from Google Play or App Store to enjoy the easy life. GoTV. Live it, love it. Welcome back. Mole in the immediate outskirts of Meiduguri, Bornu State, is phenomenal. It is one of the settlements with an amazing history. The community of Mole evolved from an art of peculiar circumstance that has over a hundred years flourished as a united group with common identity. Hamis Rogo reports that Mole is an example of common ideals collapsing barriers of diversity. Meduguri is always a place of stories, beautiful human stories. Today I'm in a community that are unique for something different. They are the people of Malay, in the local government area of Borno State. Now, these people of Malay are speak people, people with a definite identity. They are mostly lepers or children of lepers. But then, there is nothing stigmatic about it. Except for that, for the over 80 years of their life in this community, these people have not had access to basic social amenities that will really help their lives. Well, there is a light in the tunnel now. But these are a very hardy and expressive people that have defied many challenges to be where they are today. Their story is such a beautiful tale to tell. This is Mole, beautiful in Esabana and modest in outlook. In truth, the people of Mole are modest and know how to receive strangers 
I actually like the show of love displayed by the women of Mole. Their national song to receive us is wonderful. If only you know that they are all lepers. By the way, who say lepers cannot sing with their nose? The people of Mole are another Eastern diversity. Over the last centuries, lepers report a leprosy hospital close to the settlement from across the expanse of present day Borno. Many of them were treated to stay behind. Many arrived to stay in close proximity to the hospital. Mole is where they find refuge. Eventually, they took over the land and started town. The settlement actually initially belongs to the leprosy hospital. It is theirs now. They decided to live in a cluster, uh, having formed their own colony within the treatment facility. Do you have an idea of their social and economic activities over this period? Well, actually, uh, most of them are agrarian, uh, but unfortunately, some of them, uh, because of uh, uh, want to drive one or other income, used to go out. To. In the years since the early settlers in Malay, the community has been growing. There is always proximity to the clinic. They find life in agriculture too, and in petty business. Around the households, poultry is common business, so is livestock. It is not common to see anyone who is not a leper here, or a descendant of leper. It is a peculiarly leper's colony. The community has come a long way. In periods when security matters dominate Borno, they enjoyed relative peace. For the over 11 years of insurgency in Borno state, the people of Malay have never been affected. And in fact, they are very close to Sambisa forest. Some distance here is a border with the Dembwa, the very fringes of Sambisa forest. Mole is surrounded by military bunkers and is an area under continuous military surveillance and patrol. Their challenge is of an economic type and more. I could not find school anywhere near or a sustained water supply system. However, a federal ambulance's intervention has seen them have a functional electricity supply system now. Elders of the town are already captured by this development and see their children being barbers and hairdressers. To boost their economic activities further, the people have six tricycles in addition to their electricity. It is a great leap for them, as all their lives they have never had it so good. In that respect, you can understand how people who suffer leprosy can sing with their nose. It's good to know that they have great intervention there, and I think more needs to be done for them. Now, during a visit to Nigeria in 1956, at the time, it was a British colony. Queen Elizabeth of England, then 30 years old, was in Kaduna, the capital of northern Nigeria. One of those that had the privilege to meet with the Queen was an eight-year-old Masima Wodu Ishak, nay Abubakar. 64 years after that meeting, she speaks on her encounter with the Queen of England. Dauda Mohammed tells us more. In 1956, Mokwa Den used to be under the authority of Niger province in northern Nigeria. It will also interest you to note that at that time, an eight-year-old girl was picked from this community to have a meeting with a young Queen Elizabeth who was 30 years old at that time. For you to know what really transpired then, stay tuned as we take you there. The chance encounter with the Queen of England by Haja Machimo Wudu Ishak 64 years ago in Kaduna wouldn't have been possible but for the opportunity given to her to attend school. Haja Machimo Wudu, now 72 years old, a native of Mokwa, headquarters of Mokwa local government area of Niger State, started primary school in 1953 at the Native Authority Primary School in her area and by 1956 was at the Provincial Girls School, Kontobura. Haja Wudu was selected among many other girls to present a bouquet of flowers to the Queen of England during her state visit in 1956 to Kaduna, the then capital of northern Nigeria. The news came to the school, and then we, they selected about 10 of us from the school, from our school, and then we go to Kaduna. So we stayed there for about two weeks going for rehearsal 
of uh, how to take the flower and all this. She speaks on why she had to retrace her steps after presenting the bouquet of flowers to Queen Elizabeth. They, that is what they asked me to do. We have been practicing this with the, the European women and the men that were, taking, that were telling us this is what to do. The septuagenarian, who was a teacher, headmistress, principal, and retired as the education secretary of Mokwa Local Government Council after 35 years' service, showed her first classroom and speaks on her efforts at improving girl child school enrollment in her community. There is problem in Mokwa for intake. We go to schools, they, they have, we have uh, public schools and uh, private schools. And every morning they will see people, people are going to school. But when you go inside the school, you see that the, the, the people are not the uh, indigenous of Mokwa. She was an iron lady. She would go to people's home, remove somebody's daughter, you must go to school. Because of her status, nobody challenged her. Because I taught under her, and I know her capability. When we were in class two to three, at that time, she was so brilliant, no doubt about that. So because of that, she was singly, she was taken alone to Kwantagora Girls School, which is now Girls Secondary School, Kwantagora. She is the first woman who went beyond primary school in, Mok in Mokwa town. 72 years on, Hajia Machima Wudu is still thankful for the opportunity of going to school. Some experiences are just unforgettable, and I'm happy she's doing a lot to help the girl child. Our next report is about a century-old woman who suddenly became a celebrity just because of a letter. Hmm. I'm sure you're itching to know who she is and the content of the letter. Okay, listen to Simon Bamiboye, who out of curiosity visited Kolokuma Kingdom in Bayelsa State, the home of this unique woman, to have a chat with her. We are in Egbeda compound in Sabagria, home of Madame Dani Omoni Balibo. And we are here to have a chat with her over the reported appointment that was given to her from the local government council. And she is waiting for us. Mommy, do koidema. No, Mama. Mama Omonigbalebo Dani Orogono is a cheerful centenarian with an infectious smile. Mama's quick response to her visitors, rising from an afternoon nap, shows her to be a lover of people. She is said to have been a leader in her time. Though speaking through an interpreter, the passion in her voice was unmistakable. From her wealth of experience, her advice to the government is to care for the elderly in society. The whole community is happy about this thing, over this appointment, because the elderly people are not recognized in the community. The purported appointment of Mama as a special advisor on the elderly caused quite a stir in the social media circles. The backlash I got as a result of that was shocking to me because um, my intentions was basically to honor, to give honor to who honor is due. This is a woman that um, um, a full time we thought she was 118, but we came to realize afterwards she was over 130. And um, we had to, by way of giving honor to the woman to say we recognize you. Other members of the community, however, say the old woman deserves whatever honor may be extended to her as she has paid her dues over time. From the chat I used to have with my grandmother, who is late now, Miss um, Dora, she used to tell me that my great grandmother, my Dani Umonbalbo, used to be an active woman leader in her youthful age. Anything government will do for her is worthwhile. Mama Dani Umonbalbo's one wish 
is for the completion of a house started for her by her daughters years ago. The vice chairman of the council has promised to make a befitting home for her as part of his empowerment program, which he says also extends to the youths of the community. It remains to be seen how far the promises are kept. Not too old to be honored. And no matter how old she is, believe it or not, if she decides to move and do a lot for the community, it will happen. Time for a break now. Newsline continues after these messages. Your information, they important, just like your identity. Now the only way we fit take hala you make you go browse easy.gotvafrica.com. Sign in with your IUC number and mobile number and scroll down to personal details and address. Then check well to see say everything bam. You fit change the one we not correct. To finish everything, just click the save button and it don't finish. Thank you. I make sure see my phone number they correct. That's not why GoTV fit call me, make I come collect my own and wolf. Angel, <laughs> I time for my phone in that way because now my correct phone number day for book. <laughs> go TV, live it, love it. Don't look me again, no. Oh. We can go do your own. Welcome back. As the heat intensifies, medical experts have advised that people should take a lot of fluids as it helps to flush internal systems to avoid some of the life-threatening ailments like nephroleatiasis, popularly known as kidney stones. In this special report, Sandra Duese Akime takes a look at some of the causes, symptoms and preventions of kidney stones. Polytysis or kidney stones are hard deposits of mineral material formed within the kidney or urinary tracts. These hard materials or stones form when the urine becomes concentrated, allowing minerals to crystallize and stick together, such that when passing out can be quite painful. The symptoms of kidney stones may vary due to the size of the stones. This may include pain while urinating, blood in the urine, sharp pain at the back, or lower abdomen and vomiting. Common causes of um, kidney stones, most times we say um, they are maybe from calcium, like you no know, calcium is a mineral, and other compounds like magnesium, oxalates, there are some of the constituents that, that when you open the kidney stone, when you analyze it, those are the things that can be found as components of the kidney stones. So causes of kidney stone, most times it may be, the cause may be an infection, maybe the person having any infection, I don't, um, along the urinary tract, it may lead to the formation of kidney stones, then dehydration. Knowing the type of kidney stone helps determine the cause and may give clues to reduce the risk of deteriorating. People are eating diet that are low in calcium or high in oxalates, like veg um, a lot of veg some vegetables like spinach, it may precipitate kidney stones in those individuals and then high protein diet like a lot of red meat those are things that can precipitate kidney stones in an individual then for the treatment depending on the size of the stone most times this individual pass the stone and um, without any help so most time when they come you give them drugs to help relieve the pain she therefore advised the general public to always take precautionary measures by taking a lot of water and juice, especially in this dry season. Useful health tips. And on that health note, we end Newsline this week. I hope you totally enjoyed watching. Do join us again next Sunday for another fabulous edition. Good night and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>